Good morning. We're live. Hello, hello. I am coming to you from my sunroom. I didn't know how the light was going to look, so I'm checking it out. I think it's okay. You got enough light on my face. I saw from the thumbnail there was not enough light on my face, so I had to shift things around a little. Daryl, good morning. Uh, good morning, Patricia, our moderators. Thank you, John, Haffey, Patricia. Uh, Daryl, it is March 21st, and I don't have a walking trail. What am I going to do? It's going to be like Snake City out there before we get out there and do anything. Let's just make one little thing so that at least I can go up there. Anyway, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, if you are new to my channel, well, only 16, only the regulars are here so far. So I'll do that spiel in a little while. Hi, Tina, Gina, Rhonda. Is this Rhonda? Am I Rhonda from California or is this another Rhonda? Hey, Lori, Pamela, uh, everybody, uh, just for Patricia's sake, she keeps track of all the states. Just uh, she doesn't know everybody yet. If you, when you sign in, if you can just say, Hey, it's Tina from Alaska. <laughs> that would be awesome. Good morning, Pamela. Maddie is here from Iceland. We'll never forget that. D's, D is here from, I want to say Texas. Um, and, uh, oh, it's another Rhonda. Rhonda, where are you from? And how did you find this channel? I have a dear friend who watches, whose name is Rhonda in California. Charmaine Wills is here from Indiana. What a what a cheerful greeting you have there. Thank you, Charmaine. Uh, lovely name. Indiana. Victoria P is here from Central Pa. Angela, good morning. Uh, Angie uh, is one of the few people on the chat that I've actually made the journey to go and physically see in person. So you'll have to look at those travel videos if you're interested. Ah, yes, right, right. Lori is in Oman. Incredible. What time is it there, Lori? Rose is here from Texas. Son of a Gun is from um, uh, Phoenix. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it son of a gun is in Phoenix area, Fe the Phoenix, the, the Valley. Uh, D is here. Yes. Texas. Um, aha. Pamela's the Lake of the Ozarks. You know, I've never been there. And it, you know, briefly when I was watching whatever it was, Netflix or one of those, uh, I saw that Ozark show it was so dark and, murderous. <laughs> I wanted to see more of the Ozarks, but, but, uh, it was more about the drama. That's right. Fabulous Phoenix. Landcat is probably starting to get pretty hot in Phoenix now for you, uh, who have just joined. Uh, I spend the first few minutes saying hello to people, uh, and be sure and say hello. If you've never been on this chat before, I, uh, I have a lot of things I want to talk about. Uh, we'll get to that in just a few minutes. Marvin is here from the Villages in Florida. Ohio, Lynn, welcome. Jennifer, uh, West Central Georgia. Clouds moving in. I wonder if they're headed this way. It's absolutely beautiful. And I. it was so gorgeous yesterday I, um, about four or five in the afternoon, I thought I should just do a live stream outside. I just don't know how that would go. I want to do that. I want to do a live stream from my little red iron chairs on the front porch, you know, that I had in my front porch in California. If you're uh, new to my channel, there's only 35 so far, so you're probably all very familiar with this story. I'll just say briefly, uh, I am a new uh, transplant to uh, get that word planting in there, a new transplant to Tennessee. I was raised in, in, and educated in Tennessee, and then I left 
and and now I'm back after just you know a handful of years. And I went from a tiny yard in a house to no tiny yard, which I eventually developed into a garden and created my YouTube channel, Late Bloomer, and then uh, sold that, went to into an apartment briefly during the whole lockdown craziness and uh, decided that wasn't uh, going to work for me. <laughs> and uh, I, I wasn't going to be able to you know, be fulfilled in someone that was using someone else's space or just having a few pots, um, containers. So guess what? <laughs> I wound up with nine acres and, uh, a lot of it is wooded and I'm looking up in the morning. You can really see, cause the sun's over there. I used to think, well, I didn't actually look at my compass when I came here. But in December, the sun came up directly in front of my face. And now it's a little bit that way. And I was thinking it was going to go that way uh, as the season progressed. Huh. The sun is hitting something up there that looks yellow. I have all of these wildflowers everywhere. And I want to, uh, not everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. And I am right now considering how long am I going to be able to wait before I get my place mowed. I thought I could get by till April, uh, till like the middle of April. Um, I don't know what this, you know, it just, everything exploded in the last week. It's just incredible. There's there's flowers and grasses coming up. And, and you know, when, when Jeff Poppin was over here, Barefoot Farmer Consulting, he said, if I, if I let it grow up into a meadow, it would kill out the, uh, the bad stuff. The, uh, is it the Bermuda grass that I'm thinking of? Oh, uh, Tony is here from Simplify Gardening. And I just got a notification on my phone. Isn't that interesting? Hold on. Hold on. Got signed out. Uh, come on. Today is Tony O'Neill's birthday. So Tony, you're going to have to endure me singing happy birthday to you. Tony O'Neill at Simplify Gardening. Everybody sing it with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, my friend in Wales. Happy birthday, dear Tony. Happy birthday to you and a thousand more. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tony. You are awesome. And uh, I can't say enough great things about Tony at Simplify Gardening. Uh, let's see. <laughs> well, it's good to know your kids are back at school. Mm. Tess is here. Uh, Let's see. Do we have a new Teresa? Gina, do we have a new Teresa? Did I miss that while I was talking? 7 p.m. in Oman. How many people know where Oman is anyway? Let's see. Lisa V. Hi from Manila, Philippines. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for tuning in. So, so excited. What time is it in, in, uh, in Manila? Uh, 65 of you have joined. If this is the first time you've been on my channel, please let me know you're there and where you are. And we kind of keep track of that. And I'd love to know if you're watching outside the U.S. That's awesome. Mernita is here from Buffalo. She's, I think, my furthest northern fan, northeastern fan. Uh, Jackie from sunny Scotland. Love it. Wonderful. And it's sunny and beautiful here today. And, um, you know, my roots are Scott Irish Welsh. Everybody knows that, right? And my mother has some uh, Native American on her side. So that's where I get the brown eyes, which, you know, used to be a dominant. Brown eyes used to be dominant, but in, in our country, but not so much anymore, I don't think. Let's see. Good morning, Denise. Crazy. I'm just catching up on comments here. 
Tritz. Oh, okay. Tritz is Teresa. Fantastic. Teresa, where do you live? Thank you for joining. So glad you could finally make a live stream. Let's see. In the back of the house, uh, well, I don't know exactly because um, it's kind of a big square lot. You know, a lot of these properties, almost all of the properties that I looked at while I was searching were narrow tracks, just like the one there next door and the one next to that. And the five down that way, they're all narrow. This one's this one was maybe 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 this person bought two or three tracks. I don't know. So it's kind of square. So it's not um, there's as much up there as there is over there because they the people who uh, first bought this house, I think his name was. No, I don't know. I, I'm confused about that. Anyway, they set the house over. So it's closer to that lot. And there's a lot of, if you go straight out that way, well, you've been on that. If you've walked with me on that first walking tour, actually, I think I did two videos, two walking tour videos, or maybe just, maybe just the one with my son. Yeah, that's right. I just did it that one time with my son. So be sure and check it, check that out. Anyway, if you're just, if you're new to my channel, I am only, I have only been on a homestead. I have dreamed of a homestead ever since I met Doug and, and Stacy off grid with Doug and Stacy in 2018, I have dreamed of having a homestead and I didn't know how that would look. Uh, I'm they're younger than me <laughs> and uh, she's got a big, strong guy to help her, her do the, the, the manly man stuff. And, uh, so I, I didn't know what m my homestead would look like, but, uh, I found this place and I thought this, this might be good. And so, uh, it's got some issues. We've got water issues. I got a lot of rock, uh, but getting to the topic of today, uh, welcome everyone. We have 81 of you, please hit that like button if you wouldn't mind. And, uh, and I wanted to, uh, let's see, I was just going to, uh, say that, um, talk about my raised bed uh, garden. So the plan was with Jeff, and I actually haven't told him that I've modified our plan or the plan he proposed. He suggested just sort of abandoning the raised beds on the side of the driveway up here near the house. They were in um, not great shape. They were sloped off the hill in three directions. Uh, they, um, they were very close to the ground. So you would have to, you know, be all the way on your hands and knees and, and, you know, to, to do any gardening. And uh, if there's one thing I've learned from Doug and Stacy, it's age in place. And so they went through the whole back to Eden gardening thing. And they decided what would be better for them is raised beds. And so Doug built her a whole bunch of, I think four by eight raised beds, something like that. And they are, I think they're two feet tall. Of course, she's got kind of a, a they, they, they have just a gentle slope down on their property. Not so much here. It's like, woo, woo. So these raised beds were, it's either abandon them or really rebuild them. And I thought, okay, I didn't want to hire some landscaping firm to come in and say, okay, we can do all that for like, you know, thousands of dollars. Um, and then I thought, well, what's the chance I'm going to find someone that that even is interested in doing this project? But I did. I found a great guy, and his name is Justin, and uh, uh, Havy, and uh, and he is out there today making up for one of the two days that he missed this week due to rain. So. Uh, in the beginning of, the, of our working together, because I'm so pressed for time now to get the garden going, he's working every day here until we can kind of get something in shape. And uh, so I'm very excited about that. So the plan is to, and he's already 
rebuilt the seven beds that are out there. And you will be seeing this if you tune in today. I am going to make a, an, a, a supreme effort to have a premiere at 5 p.m. today, Central Standard Time. I know a lot of people in, in Europe will be sound asleep, but uh, tune in tomorrow if you can. But I, I'm going to do a premiere this afternoon because I'm really trying. You might have noticed I uploaded every day this past week. I had, I had content every day this past week. I'm trying to get caught up. So right now he is putting the red cedar that I had delivered. I ordered a lot of red cedar, two by eights, two by eight by eights, and uh, 50 something of them. <laughs> I don't know. I only needed... 32, but for some reason I ordered over 50. I don't know how quite, I don't, I'm not sure quite how that happened, but uh, believe me, we can use the wood. It, the, 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 the cedar is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's um, somewhat uh, pest resistant and, uh, and um, it, it lasts for a very long time. So uh, he has upcycled, recycled, these raised beds that were there, that they, they were built just on the slope, just sort of a box sitting on the slope, two by uh, two by twelves or two by tens, and was sort of sitting on the slope, and then it had a had a top rail of a two by four. So it was, you know, part of it was only like that high, and so he has reused all of that wood, redone all of that wood, taken them apart. They were they were eight, eight feet square and made them six by eights and leveled them. You know, I love, I love things to be leveled. And so it's going to be a beautiful terrace garden and I'm so excited. So after he gets the race and we're adding one, so we have an even number of eight to start. I got plenty of room for more. <laughs> and he has a contact for, um, uh, uh, a, a truckload of uh, whatever I want, whether I want native soil or or uh, compost, you know, so I can get that up here. And um, because now I've added a lot of height, so I'm going to need more dirt. And um, I was hoping to use the dirt from the excavation of doing the French drain in the back, but the, those guys haven't been back because it's been so wet. Meanwhile, uh, you know, I've got to have some trees taken down, um, not keen on that, not, not crazy about that idea, but uh, I don't want to have those big, huge trees falling on my house either. So, um, and, and two of them are seriously leaning. So got to do that. So it's got a lot coming up. What I want to talk about, wait, did I find, did, let's see. Oh, thank you, May. I appreciate that. Hey, Echocentric is here, Jothan from Newfoundland, right? It's so great to hear from you, Tess, Gina, and Teresa. Thank you for joining. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Dana from Pennsylvania has left me a wonderful comment. Hey there, I enjoy your drive and enthusiasm. Where do you get your energy? I don't know. I don't know. Keep up the good cacao. <laughs> I drink a lot of cacao with raw honey in my late bloomer gardener mug. Um, by the way, I'm debating on uh, changing the late bloomer gardener to late bloomer homestead. And I'm wondering if people would be interested in buying a mug if I do that. I've almost decided to stop fooling with it, though, because, you know, I wind up with about five dollars uh, for for my, <laughs> my enterprise here. And um, you wind up with a great mug. Uh, but let's see, I think I have three more to, uh, that she has made that are to sell, to, to, to sell. So if anybody is interested in getting one of the last few Late Bloomer Gardener mugs, um, send a $40 donation to my PayPal link. Um, Haffy, if you could scrounge the, up that link, that would be great. 
Uh, you, you need to send it to a friend though. Don't just send it because PayPal takes out a commission. Um, so anyway, let's see. Uh, thank you so much, Dana. I really appreciate that comment and I appreciate you tuning in. Let's see, how deep is the water? What are we talking about, Gina? Thailand. Somebody's here from Thailand. How amazing. You know, I've never been anywhere over there. Uh, oh, thank you, May. So May's first live stream. And um, I'm, I'm so glad you joined. Let's see. Debbie is here from Lancaster. Pe oh, wait. Petra is here from Australia. Fantastic. I missed that. Terry is here. <laughs> yes, I sang. I, I was singing. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what possessed me to sing. I sang in a few live streams um, back before. I sang. The best one I ever did was I sang. Uh, what was that? Oh, you'll remember. I sang. Uh, Hallelujah. It was sunset and it was in the back of my house, one of the last live streams from my house. And I sang hallelujah just as the sun was going down. That was a, that was pretty special. Um, I'm not a professional singer. I'm a professional actor. I always, ha I always have been. No, I, I have been since 1980. Uh, but with the way things are now with the uh, you know, the restrictions, the lockdown, the da 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 you know, I just decided to focus on my channel. And um, how better to focus on my channel than to have a big homestead and show people what it's like to try to do this when you're older. And so you do need help. You do need help. But it's been interesting. I have every everybody that comes here, I... If I'm looking for some kind of person or worker or, or recommendation, I always get a good one. And um, got a great guy working for me right now. Fantastic. So, and so let's see, Sandra is here from Colorado. Oh, I'm so sorry you get so much snow there. I did live in Colorado when I was young and it was a lot of fun to have all that snow, but I, I wasn't trying to garden. And we're in, uh, uh, Teresa is from Peoria, Illinois. I actually don't know where that is exactly. Um, I don't know, I didn't see RC, but RC is here from Thailand. Oh, I see. Oh, I see, yes, yes, yes. Rat, Ratsuk, Ratsukan Chakong. Did I say that right? <laughs> I have to adjust. I I can't breathe. <laughs> I have, uh, let's see. Oh, snow. So you're still deal dealing with snow? Actually, I don't know where Oman is, but I'm sure anybody that's that's been in the service in their 30s that got shipped out over there would know. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh, Jothan, how dare, how dare you? <laughs> I never say. Let's see. Oh, so you'll be here, Gina. Thank you. Now I've got to edit that. I hasn't done it yet. I need to. Um, Good investment, you will use it. I have no idea what you're talking about, Daryl. Isabel is here from Portugal. Fantastic. Use the red cedar as a border in front of the house. As a border in front of the house. Do you mean, hmm, I've got to do some work out there because the guy that came the other day to do my trees said these wood chips should not be up against my foundation. So that's the first thing I have to do. But where are you suggesting that I put the red cedar? Because I have this sidewalk. You don't want it on the outside of the sidewalk because you could trip over it. 
And then you run into all those maple tree roots. So I, I'm not sure where you're, you're envisioning that, Gina. Louise is here from Alberta, Canada. It is a live show. <laughs> it really is. Let's see. Uh, no, I am not near the Smokies. I spent a lot of time in the Smokies. Um, the Smokies are east of Knoxville, and, and Knoxville is a ways from here. So I'm maybe hmm, a third of the way. I don't even know. I'm, I'm, I'm west of Knoxville. Let's see. What's legal here, Daryl? Hey, D. D is going to be listening from the garden. Love Notes is here. Yes, that's what they say about red cedar is insect repellent. So uh, I'm hoping that that keeps them away from my raised beds. So he is, so he, he, um, well, uh, Haffy, uh, Justin was saying, let's see. I can't remember if it was the last place or this place, but he had, it was two acre. No, wait, it, it wasn't, it wasn't too expensive and uh, to rent. Elizabeth uh, is here from Dallas. Uh, Rutledge. I don't know. I don't know where Rutledge is. Uh, sorry about that, Haffy. Um, Let's see. Okay, so I, I think I'm caught up on on that. So okay, I need this is some of the things I need help with um, because, like I said, I had a small garden. I did a lot of things. I had a lot of biodiversity, but it was very small. And I'm experiencing things now that I haven't experienced before. Somebody asked me, you know, uh, I, uh, somebody said that I was would have so much. It was on a comment on a video, I think. I would have so much produce. What was I going to do with it? Well, let's wait and see. Let's not put the cart before the horse because um, I don't know what I'm dealing with in terms of weather. I mean, I remember many times my brother-in-law, he's just got a flat meadow behind their house. And he would just say, we didn't get anything this year. We got washed out. So I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm on a hill, so I've got drain. It's going to drain. The water is going to drain down, so I don't think that the uh, plants are going to be sitting in a puddle of water. But um, who knows what I'm in for? You know, if I can get the deer fence up, maybe get it protected around the bottom. But that's a big job, and I'm nowhere near doing that yet. But I have 105 plants that I could put out. Oh well, it's more than 105. Let's see. Anyway, I've got 105 seedlings. If you saw on Instagram and Facebook, I posted my potted up seedlings. Uh, and there's 100 and wait, it's nine times six. No, wait. Oh, <laughs> it's 108. I, I don't remember. I don't remember what's what, but okay. Let's see. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic, Teresa. Yes, yeah, she was, uh, I, I, you could kind of call it canning. She was actually fermenting vegetables, which is something I can't wait to do. Teresa said, said she saw me on Off Grid in a video on canning. And she was, we, we harvested her, pe her sweet peppers and she put sweet peppers and onions. I think that was all. I think that was all she put in that jar. She made a a, a quart jar of, of fermented vegetables and showed me how to do it. And it wound up in the video. Uh, ah, Lori. It, yes, Colorado is. It's it's beautiful. I mean, 
I was so in love with, um, you know, John Denver when I was out there. And I actually saw him once um, at a uh, kayaking on the stream, kind of a, kind of a competition or I, I don't know, maybe it was a, a special thing. I, I can't remember why, but I saw him there. And um, he, he died tragically way too early. I have three, Tess. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, if I have extra pr produce, I will. I mean, I, I know the... Uh, I haven't... Uh, if you watch the last... I know a lot of people go from India to Dubai for vacation. Is Doug and Stacy here? Oh, there they are. <laughs> we were just talking about you. Your ears must have been burning. Oh, Doug, you got to tell me. I, I uh, No, that's an inside secret. I'll ask you later. <laughs> uh, I, Doug has, a, has this recent video where he goes out at the crack of dawn can't hardly see his face. It's so it's barely light. And he goes out and it's pouring, you know, stormy, pouring. He, his hat is soaking wet. He's walking around with the, the selfie stick, showing us how he does his chores. And I'm just going, man, ask that guy where he gets his energy. That's that's what I want to know. Oh well, I, I know it. I know where he gets his energy. He comes back in. He's got those einkorn pancakes sitting on the <laughs> sitting on the stove because Stacy's been in there in that nice warm kitchen uh, cooking up some einkorn pancakes. Yes, that's what I want to do. In fact, it, if you saw some of my earlier love notes, says uh, I need to be canning and and all of that, and I want to. For sure, I want to ferment. I want to can, I, and that's why I, I stocked up on all of those um, jars and lids and everything early on. Yeah, well, when I was spending all my time on photography in my dark room in California, uh, I'm assuming that's that's Doug, but I don't know. Maybe it's Stacy. Um, I had this. Uh, what, what did what did we call those tape players that had the two speakers attached on the side? It had a name back then. That was before the iPod, and and all these kids kids ran around with carrying these things and would set them up. And it had a name when the, those things had a name. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> I had one of those in my dark room, and I had the full set of John Denver CDs. And I would just put one in right after another, and and I would I would work in the dark room for like eight hours, uh, making print, making silver prints, and um, I didn't have the best ventilation in there. And I would come in, and I I from the chemicals, and I would feel like something was pressing on my sternum, literally. And I was thinking, I am going to kill myself with these chemicals. <laughs> so then I you you have to have three basic chemicals just to do the basic process. That's not toning or anything. And so the middle, you have to have your developer, your stop bath, and then your fixer. So in other words, you put your paper into the developer, but you got to stop that development. And you do that with an acid. And they have these chemicals that stop it. But I, I learned that you could just use white vinegar. And uh, so I I, I removed one of the basic chemicals from that lineup. And then I also started using, I used plexiglass covers over each tray. It takes an extra second to lift those up, slip the paper in, pull it back down. But that really kept me from inhaling uh, uh, so many chemicals. Oh, thank you for binge watching, Teresa. I really appreciate that. Boom box. There you go. I knew it. I wanted to say Xbox and I know that's a game. Thank you. Boom box, boom box, boom box, boom box. Everybody's telling me thank you. <laughs> I knew it had a funny name like that. I knew it was something box. <laughs> Let's see. 
Is boombox like Norm on Cheers? I don't know. I worked on Cheers. The last season of Cheers, I worked on that show. <clears throat> Got to work with Ted Danson. And uh, that was awesome. <laughs> oh, yes. I absolutely love the dark room. It's, it's, it just feels like a magic moment when those images come up. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, my mentor who, who started out doing dark room work for Avedon, who was a big fashion photographer in New York, and my mentor was also a fashion photographer, James Moore. And he started out as, as his uh, darkroom person, Avedon's darkroom person. And uh, so he's the one that got me into it. And I built a dark, after meeting him, I wound up building a darkroom and spending the next 10 years of my life taking uh, pictures with an old Roloflex, 1953 Roloflex, traveling around the country, photographing old friends and uh, people who influenced me. And I was going to make a book. Never got the book made, got the prints made, but never got the book made. And uh, But then Jimmy uh, died of cancer and he never smoked and he didn't drink alcohol. So it's like, okay. <clears throat> Connie is here. <laughs> Say hello to Connie, everyone. Connie is here for the first time because she is Justin's mom from Montana. Justin, my a new helper in the garden, who's who's rebuilding. Well, he's gonna do, he's gonna build a lot of stuff, but right now he's starting with the most urgent thing, which is the raised beds, because I have all these plants that need to be planted and they need somewhere to go. So. Uh, He's going to probably finish up the seven beds today. Well, he will. And then I need a load of dirt. So hopefully we can get that done tomorrow. And um, Doug, I don't know when you tuned in, but I was just talking about, you know, the fact that you built Stacy these higher raised beds. So my raised beds, my raised beds are going to be terraced on the hillside, but um but it's a hillside, so one end of them is only going to be probably about that high off the ground, but the other side is going to be like that high off the ground. So it, it'll be interesting. But we widened the the walkways through there, which means I lose some um, I, I I lose some uh, raised bed space, but at least I can navigate. And um, so anyway, I'm excited. Let's see. <laughs> right. This was a boom box. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I'll do that sometime if I ever get my office organized, Maria, it's just, all this is so pressing, uh, to get the, uh, to get the garden off the, Oh yeah, ghetto blaster. I remember that. Let's see. I was also on uh, Becker after that, and I worked with him in a in a great scene after that too. So um, ah, those were the good old days. <laughs> Let's see. Where are we? Yeah, that's uh, that's Maria. You, you mentioned that pastime in winter. You know, I came here December first, and I thought, oh man, I've got this whole winter to get organized. Here we are. It's like March twenty first. I'm not ready. I'm I'm always late. It's just incredible. <laughs> uh, well, it would be a coffee table, uh, Teresa, it would be a coffee table photographic book. And um, I might do that. I mean, how many people would be interested in buying a, a, a book of uh, 
you know, print prints of my friends. You know, that's just it. I don't know. And and of course, I want to write something about each one, people that influenced me. Oh, shucks, Gina. Yeah, I am. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting you should say that. I do do all that, but um, I have done all that. But uh, my mentor in college, I, I have an art degree in, in studio art, and, um, and I was an art dealer and an art representative, and um, I have a lot of – I have an art collection. And um, – and my art teacher said, you have to put all your eggs in one basket. And meaning I had to just focus on art and only art. And I just, oh, I've just never been able to do that. And then, of course, you have a family and you have kids. And then, <laughs> um, yes, I did. I did. Uh, yeah, I was on General Hospital. I did that. <laughs> I don't know that it's so sprawling, Daryl. It, it, it's not It's not sprawling. It's just here. You know, it's not like I can expand it. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up, Happy Asparagus. Top, <laughs> it says asparagus, help. Okay. So when I, the only time I ever planted asparagus in California is I bought them from the from a nursery and they were in individual pots. Each crown was in individual pots and it already had little ferns. I'm thinking that's what I just bought from this this um, grower because I bought a hundred crowns. No, I just got this little thing with little roots on it and and and, and the whole 100 of them is only a bunch about this big. So um, I don't know how to plant them, how much space to give. I'm going to have to research that unless somebody wants to tell me. Oh, my gosh. That's fantastic. Uh, let's see. I know. I know. I need help with that, too, Haffy. Uh, Haffy is talking about I need a new intro for my, uh, for, for, for my channel. It, I just... Creating that 10 second opening with the titles and everything, it takes time. I need to have an intro that I can just throw on. Just like in my old show, my editor, she created that opening with the music, the titles, and me saying, Hi, I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. Da 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 boom. Uh, by the way, if anybody's interested, I'll tell you sometime how I came up with that. Um, but um, that's what I need to just slap on the front of front and and something on the end of every video. I could go so much faster editing wise if I if I had that created. But I don't know that I'm qualified enough as an editor to create something that good. So uh, you know, a lot of people have really nice introduction videos. And that, that introduction video is really to attract new people to the channel. So I've still got my old one because it, it was so well made and I haven't, I don't have anything better, you know, so I know I need something new now that I'm here. So, well, I would Maria, except it's outside in the sun in a big bucket of water. So it's, um, it's 100 little, bunches with a couple little roots off the bottom and I have it in a five gallon bucket out there. Yeah, I know. I want a short, short intro. Yeah. So how do I plant that? I've got a hundred of them. Oh, good. I'll, I'll check that out. Um, I'll do that. Am I gardener? What, did he plant the really skinny little tiny, tiny things? Kathy? Wow. You started it from seed. Uh, Audrey, what are you saying? Can't you still use that? <laughs> I do Jeannie. I, I, if I didn't believe in myself, I wouldn't be here. Honestly, I'd be in a condo in Nashville. <laughs> the mug rug? 
What is a mug rug, Cami? Did you send it to my post office box? I literally have not been in my car for a week. And I haven't been to my post office box. You know, the thing, the problem is I always go when I go see my mother. I haven't been able to see my mother for three weeks. That's really weighing heavy on my heart. I'm just, it's really bothering me. Um, 12 inches apart. Did you have the little tiny ones, Don Don? Jeannie Hall, did you do that? Did you, did you do yours 12 inches apart? I am a Tennessee homesteader. Um, I am. So I'm not sure. Ah, dig a trench, spread the roots, and cover. That sounds easy. 12 inches apart. Okay. Eight feet. Hang on, hang on a second. Eight times 12 is 96 inches divided by. Wait. Oh, you said you did them 12 inches apart. So I do eight crowns in a row. And it's six feet apart. So that's six times eight is four. So can I do 48 crowns in one bed? That seems like a lot. Because don't they multiply underground? I mean, I know they do. Well, that's fantastic, Cammie, but I did not get it. And, and I'm sure that's my fault because I haven't been to the post office box in over a week but I really need to get over there. It's just that we started this project and Justin has been here almost every day and every day he hasn't been here. It's been like storming. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Teresa. I love the fireplace. It's just like, I knew that if I got it right and, and some people were like giving me a hard time on the comments about, Oh, leave the guy alone. Let him do the job. You know? Well, Hey, I helped him speed up the cleanup of that. That was a big mess to clean up. And he was, he was thrilled he got the help. I haven't heard from him since, and he left his shop vac and his his um, tape measure here. Um, but, oh dear, I just saw a wasp or hornet or something. Let's see, Barbara's here from Indiana. Yes, that's the thing. I'm not going to have asparagus for three years. Uh, we use silt. We use silt found at the bottom after a big rain. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, D is saying use silt. And you know, it's, it's interesting because that's kind of what was in the bed. I was thinking about putting it in, but now that it all got kind of mixed in because of um, rebuilding it. The beds are six by eight feet. Uh, let's see, they were, it, it was purple. It was purple something, Eric at Double Dog. I, you know, it's so long since I ordered it, I forgot the name of it. I can look it up but it was purple something. Oh, I love the mug rug and I look forward to getting that Cammy. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to give a big shout out to Cammy. She's a great fan. And um, I appreciate your gifts and your good wishes and all your likes. And 100 of you are here, 101 of you are here. Thank you for joining. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, I hope you subscribe. Uh, I, I hope to have lots of fun and interesting uh, videos uh, about homesteading and about particularly about gardening and cooking later when I get a little bit more organized. Uh, cooking, canning, all the things that you do to survive. You know, this is about taking care of yourself and, and, and survival these days, you know, we don't know uh, what kind of food shortages are coming down the pike. Um, we just don't know what's going to happen. This, this, the world is in a very precarious place and there couldn't be a better time than to team up with somebody if you need to, if you don't have your own garden space, team up with somebody and start growing some food. So um, if I can be a, a, a inspiration to you to do that, then that's what I want to do. Okay. 
Okay, 12 to 18 inches apart, plant in a trench and cover with two inches of soil. Okay, I can do that. Eight total clumps, Don Don. Eight, only eight in a four by eight, because mine's six by eight, and I got a hundred. And 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 they wouldn't they won't survive if I put them in the ground. And I don't want to. I can't afford to take. Oh, I just can't do that. I mean, I need to put. <laughs> I need to put. 50 in a bed because I have a hundred. I need to put 50 in a bed. Well, we'll see. Sandy soil. Okay. I'm, I'm making a note of that sandy soil for the asparagus. Um, maybe, uh, Maybe Justin's um, person um, has that. Uh, okay, uh, I, I got some stuff. I've got to do some stuff with my plants I brought from California. I need to get my comfrey planted. And um, anybody got any suggestions where to plant my comfrey? And also, I want to know if, uh, oh, that I need to plant my cannas outside. And um, I've also got, I'm going to have uh, my, um, what do you call it? Um, um, <laughs> big, beautiful bulbs, big, big, beautiful amaryllis. My amaryllis leaves are coming up. I brought three of them. I brought three of them from California. They're this color. And uh, I thought I might just let them bloom inside, but I'm wondering if maybe I should put them outside. Will they multiply at all? Or do they always, does anybody know about amaryllis bulbs? Do they always just stay in the one bulb from year to year? Uh, it's not like iris that, that, uh, multiplies, right? So I'm just wondering what of my, um, uh, plants that I brought from California that I can get outside now. We're not going to have any more frost It could be purple passion. Let me look that up. I mean, let me see if I can look it up. Um, I mean, I might have to try to sign in or something. I am uh, currently trying to look up what kind of asparagus I, I brought. I bought asparagus crowns. It was, yes. And it says bare root two years old. Two years old? It's just like a little tiny clump. It's, it's this big. Wow. I mean, there's just no way that's going to produce a big. I wouldn't think that that would produce anything big by next year. Ah, D, uh, let's see. I spent an hour explaining how to build a good asparagus bed. Yes, well, I've got the age. I just don't have the experience or possibly the correct soil. Um, thank you so much, Mary. Mary's asking for everybody to hit that like. If you don't know how to do that, you you just X out the live chat for a moment. If you're on mobile, you just X out the live chat for a moment. Click that uh, thumbs up button and then just click live chat and you go right back to where we are. Let's see. By the way, I had a thumbs down this morning 15 minutes before I went live. So... Um, it's just interesting that, that that people are spreading that around in, in times like this, you know. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I was just literally, Jeannie, I was going to just fill up one whole bed with asparagus, but it's only six by eight and I've got a hundred. So that sounds like that would be overdoing it. But, but it's, they're only like this big. Maybe I could just dig them up next year and Um, well, Sager, this is, a, this is a panel. This was either painted or it's a picture put onto a wood panel and then it has a, uh, an overlay that is cracked. So the cracked, the cracked overlay is like part of the design. I've got two of them. My brother gave them to me, so I, I don't know the uh, provenance. So I can't tell you anything more about it. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I heard that about asparagus in Wisconsin. I actually knew that. Well, uh, Tony, did you at least hear me sing happy birthday? I didn't, I didn't catch whether you heard that or not. Oh, uh, third year from now, who knows where, you know, what things are going to be like in three years. Hmm. Um, uh, D, this, uh, this comfrey does not seed. I'm pretty sure I got this from, uh, OAG. Um, and I am pretty sure this one does not uh, drop seed. Isabel, why, what, what was the question? What are you asking? Um, well, I, I must be behind in comments so they, it said online, they were two year crowns. So, I mean, but they're just tiny little things. Okay, Tony, thank you. Do you grow asparagus in Wales? Well, that I have a total, I'm going to have a total of eight beds and I cannot designate four of them to asparagus. I've got 108 plants out there uh, that need to be planted out now. And I have, um, but, but, the, but it has to go into the race bed where the, where there's, there hasn't been uh, the Bermuda grass for some time because it'll, the Bermuda grass will kill it. So uh, it's either just chuck them, throw them away or put them in, I could buy a, um, hmm. I could buy a couple of those really big 20 gallon cloth pots and put them on my driveway. <laughs> um, ooh, I hate to do that. Then I got to come up with all that soil. Yeah, I think that's what he sent me. Uh, I'm going to have to double check with OAG. I haven't, I haven't, we haven't talked about that in a long time. Hey, Mello. Well, I hope so. Love notes, I hope so. Now, Mary, um, my neighbor, the same neighbor who gave me the tip about the cornstarch on the potatoes, uh, he came from Florida and he said they used to grow the best celery in Florida because of the sandy soil. Um, I, I haven't had that experience because I've never had sandy soil. So let the amaryllis go dormant. Oh, I'm going to screen, I'm going to screenshot that because I don't, I don't um, think I'll remember that. Come on. Oh, well. This is one. 
Well, I think this needs water. Uh, this is one right now. And um, I have another one kind of like that. And then one more with just one leaf. So right now they're, Cami, they're going to bloom. They're going to bloom. So I'll, I'll do that later, right? Echocentric, are you talking about the comfrey under the trees? My maple trees is just all roots. I don't even think they would survive under there. Let's see. Ah, I'm having a hard time keeping up with the conversation. Let's see. Good morning, Nate Vance. You missed it. You're going to have to go back and watch it. It's time to get off. Um, let's see. Oh, it, it's not that simple, Maria. First of all, my editor moved on. You know, we haven't worked together in five years and she's, she's moved on. So, and I had a, a, and the composer I haven't worked with in eight years and, uh, and, um, and then my sound editor is extremely busy. So uh, that just wouldn't, it just wouldn't be possible. Plus I'd have to, I'd still have to create it. I would have to create it and shoot it. And, uh, and send all the clips. And I mean, it would, it would take less time for me to do it probably, but it's just, um, I don't have a jingle and you know, I, with the thousands and thousands and thousands of songs on epidemic sound, I can't find something that I really like to use for like a jingle. They have intros, but they're like heavy handed and, and beats and electro punk and, uh, Blech. and uh and then they have intros for documentaries but they're three minutes long and then they have they don't have jingles you know they have a some stings a sting is like dun, da, 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 you know that, like those 10 second things that do that there isn't there isn't a good one so it's like oh i can't use my old one because uh um I don't, I don't want to reuse that. You know, I, I don't want to, to lift anything that I used before because everything is new now. I'm different. My place is different. What I'm doing is different. So I got to come up with some, with a jingle and, uh, and I got to shoot something. And so we'll see. I don't know. It's a lot of work. Yeah, well, uh, Don, Don, maybe next year I could, um, maybe what I could do this year is put them all in two beds and then divide it. Tony, could I do that? Could I divide it after this season? Because I need a whole season to kill the Bermuda grass. Because um, we're expanding the garden, but it's going to take time to kill that grass. Ah, uh, ooh, darn it. My, uh, my peach trees, uh, I don't know if this apple or peach, but I'm assuming it's peach. They're, they're blooming and I'm, I'm worried about how I'm going to, I can't, I don't want to keep the bees away by putting netting over that, but, uh, I don't want, I don't want them to get eaten. Those blooms to get eaten by deer and, the deer seem to be a little bit confused. I, I mean, I didn't, I only saw them out there yesterday cause I got up really early and, and they go across my yard at dawn. It's, it's the same mother and, and two, two uh, children. And they go across and they're, and they're seeing all that we, we expanded it all. You're going to see this this afternoon. If I get this video edited and uh, we, we put out all this cardboard that I had used from my move. I hadn't thrown any of the cardboard away from all of my move and all of the Amazon packages and everything. And, 
and then we put some wood chips on top of them just just enough to hold them down in the wind and they're kind of looking over like well i don't know if i want to step on that or not you know and they didn't step on it they went walk, they walked around it so at some point there will be a deer fence there so um that's not done yet come free okay so so i think the uh, divide the asparagus. I don't have enough. I mean, I, I can divide the, I've only got one little pot of comfrey and I want it to expand. I want a lot of comfrey. Where's the best place to plant comfrey? Mm, I think it's black plastic that you use to solarize grass, isn't it? And I suppose I could. I thought I thought I had enough cardboard to do the job, but I don't. Oh, that's interesting. Asparagus is a major medicinal. I just I just loved it to eat it. I didn't really realize that it, uh, asparagus was a medicinal. A black tarp. Bye, Jotham. So, Tony, if, if it doesn't propagate, I mean, how do you make more of it? How do you make it grow if it doesn't, um, if it's sterile? <laughs> no, Teresa. No, I can't use an established song for the melody of my channel. I would be paying royalties out the you know what. No, no. It's got to be original. And I can't I can't write original music. So, I either use a jingle that <clears throat> comes from ep excuse me, that comes from Epidemic Sound which I pay $15 a month for the the rights to use that music. Or it has to be completely original, which I buy outright from a composer. So, which is what I did, you know, in the, in the first place. But I got an incredible deal when I first started. There were no web series or anything, and composers are a little wiser now. <laughs> they don't they don't give their work away for free. So the feature the the premiere, yeah, I need to get off that this after I hope to get this done very, very quickly. The morels, uh, Daryl, somebody asked me the other day, oh, have you seen anybody walking on your property to get the morels? And I'm just going, oh no, are they going to do that? Are they going to climb the fence and come in here? And, and at what time of day is the best? I know it's right after a rain and the sun is shining, but in general, is that in the morning when the sun hits up there? Because I want to get some of my own morels. I, I, I know it's by root. I know comfrey is by root di division, Tony. It's just that I only have what's in this one pot. So I can, if there's separate roots in there, I don't remember. Uh, there may be two in there. So I separate those and then I got two plants. Then what? I mean, how do I get more plants? Do I have to just order it? Ah, so I want to plant asparagus where it's going to stay. Okay. It's an accumulator. I hadn't heard that term. So it, 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 it accumulates from the root. Uh, yeah. Uh, Justin? Somebody's knocking on the door. Hold on one second. I'm sorry to go over everyone. It was just like, I'm getting all this great information. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Bye, Nate. Let's see. Okay, good. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Yes. Plant your little pot of comfrey undisturbed. Next year you can divide. Okay. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't call it little. <laughs> it, it looks like about a 14 inch pot. It's that big and this big around and the leaves are that tall. But there aren't that many leaves and I know it's going to do better outside. Let's see. Ah, oh, Nate said that, that um, the Bermuda is tough and the tarp won't work for long. Di Dinesh, Dinesh, Dinesh. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, Dinesh. I'm fine, but we're getting off now. We're, we're, let's see. Don't worry, they usually walk creek banks. What do you mean? Oh, 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 people. Oh, I see. I don't have a creek bank. Put some asparagus in the forest. What an idea. Hmm. <laughs> I thought about that, but I, I really can't start shooting people, Beatrice. I really can't do that. <laughs> uh D, are you talking about my comfrey? Chop it in half. Well, I I appreciate that, Na uh, Nate. So uh, I almost said Nance. Uh, Nate, uh, what what systemic herbicide are you referring to? Oh, thank you for that, Eric. Dynamic accumulators are used to gather beneficial nutrients. Yes, please hit the like button, everyone. I would really appreciate that. I've also, just very quickly, I've also got cardamom. I could plant that outside. Uh, I've got, um, I've got, uh, what do you call this? Uh, <laughs> for the mosquitoes, uh, citronella, cannas, uh, And of course that pepper plant, which I don't even know if it's gonna survive, but uh, I'm assuming I can just plant all the cannas outside now, right? Ah, uh, Nola, thank you so much. But you know, we're getting off. Uh... Oh, that's fun. fantastic. Well, why don't you, uh, why don't you leave me, let's see. If you want to help to develop my garden, Danette, I don't know. I can't. I, I can't quite. I can't quite figure out how to uh, pronounce your name. Um, send me a an email through my contact page on my website. Okay, I'm going to say bye, everybody. Um, thank you, everyone. Daryl, get over here. Uh, I need eggs too. <laughs> uh, so thanks for all your support. Uh, stay tuned this afternoon for a premiere if I can get it edited. And um, uh, what it will be will be the uh, just uh, a garden update of how things look and this this whole week of developing the garden. Uh, it's obviously going to be in phases. I can't put all that in one video. So I'm going to just kind of do a week at a time, like week one, week two, that kind of thing. Patricia, thank you so much, uh, moderators. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Teresa. So, so am I. Vivian, uh, Tony, uh, I hope you have a wonderful birthday, Tony. I appreciate that.
I don't know what pennywort is, but that scares me, uh, NC Coast fan. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Uh, let's see. Egg companies aren't allowed to put healthy on their products. It's interesting. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Say hi to your family for me, Tony. Okay. Thanks everyone. And I appreciate everybody who is going to be tuning in later and watching this later. Uh, it's not all about just the, uh, the first 100 people that watch the live stream. It's about also about everybody that tunes in later too. So I hope you'll uh, hit the like button and follow the progress of my homestead and God bless you and have a wonderful week, everyone.